What's happening? Today's video is gonna be about the best college degree minors. That's right, you've got college degree majors, which is what we usually talk about on this channel. But what about the minors that you can tack on too, since colleges make you take a bunch of extra filler classes anyways? This one was requested by subscribers, and yes, I checked to see if you're subscribed when I'm looking at video requests. So make sure you subscribe, don't be a lurker. Oh, and as always, don't forget to gently tap the like button and let's get started. And number 10 on the list is probably going to be a huge shocker to you. Number 10 on the list is going to be technology related degrees that are not computer science. So you might be surprised to see this one so low on the list. I talk a lot on this channel about how I think technology degrees are great. Now one issue that pops up a lot for technology related degrees is that they're too specific. So for instance, you might be studying something that doesn't really have any jobs or any value 20 years from now. Technology is evolving so fast that there are a lot of careers that exist right now that won't exist in 20 years and vice versa. However, if if I think you're going to do a technology degree, I think it'd be better for you to major in it and then minor in something else rather than the other way around. And that's why I didn't put it as high on the list. But this one can still be really good depending on the exact major you go for and the situation. Now, if this is something that you're not interested in, it's totally fine. It's not the end of the world. Number nine on the list is going to be foreign language. Now, you're probably surprised to see this one here. It can be a pretty good one to minor in, especially if you're planning on working internationally. Do you understand? It can even be a good one to double major in if you're absolutely sure of the country that you're gonna be working in. Now, this is one you definitely wanna do your research on, but if you're really passionate about a language, it can be a good one. It's especially good to go for a language that's really common. Languages like Russian, Mandarin, or High Valerian can open up a lot of opportunities for you. Now, even if it doesn't directly lead to you making money, it can always help you get a job because companies are always looking for people that are bilingual. Most Americans don't even speak a full language. They speak the half language that's known as American. Bruh. So if you're fluent in more than one language, that is very impressive. Number eight on the list is going to be art-related degrees such as graphic design. Now, as most of you know, unless you're a trust fund baby or your grandma started a college fund for you 50 years ago, you probably shouldn't major in an art-related degree. You could consider double majoring it if you combine it with a degree that has a lot of practical value. That's a great choice. But I think art-related degrees are good for minors. Not only are art-related degrees good for minors, but in my opinion, I think they can make your application to a company look even better. It shows that you have an artistic and an interesting side. You're not just a soulless robot whose only interest is to pay off their mountain of student loan debt. Just about everybody either enjoys doing art themselves or at the very least they appreciate art and think that people who are artists are pretty interesting. And believe it or not, employers and hiring managers don't like to only hire soulless robots or reptiles all the time because at the end of the day, these are the people that you have to work with. These degrees also show that you can have a creative side as well and later on in the future, you can help the company solve their problems in a creative way. Number seven on the list is going to be humanities degrees such as history or philosophy. Another very interesting subject, I would say that history is one of my favorite subjects to read about as well as study. Now, although a lot of things that you learn in these types of subjects aren't directly practical in terms of teaching you skills that will make you money in real life, I do think that it indirectly teaches you skills that will lead you to having a better life and probably even making more money overall. Philosophy, for instance, can teach you how to think logically. History can teach you how to avoid making the same mistakes that people made in the past, etc. This might not lead you to directly making money. They have a reputation for, you know, not being very profitable. A lot of people who get these degrees end up working as baristas at Starbucks. But the knowledge, the wisdom, and the skills that you can learn from these types of subjects can lead to you indirectly making more money. Number six on the list is going to be social science related degrees such as psychology. So more uh, extremely popular degrees. Psychology is one of the most popular degrees out there. I think there's over a hundred thousand people graduating with a psych degree every single year. I thought psychology was really interesting in undergrad. Uh, my sister actually majored in psychology. I took extra classes just because I thought it was so interesting and you know I had to take extra classes anyway so I might as well take stuff that was interesting. I also did an internship at a psych hospital in my last year of pharmacy school and it was one of the funnest internships I've ever done. So I can see why a lot of people like this stuff. The human brain is just infinitely interesting. Um, there's a lot of advancements that are going to be made 
made in the future just because of how complicated it is. So I think that a lot of the skills that you learn in psychology can be extremely useful, especially if you combine it with a degree that has some market value. A lot of other people find it interesting, just like humanities and art degrees, and you're more likely to strike up a conversation with them. Again, a lot of these types of degrees I'm talking about don't make very good majors just because of the fact that the numbers don't make sense. But despite that, colleges are more than happy to take your money knowing that you're probably not going to be able to get a job. But these types of degrees can still make really good college minors. Number five on the list is going to be communications. Now, I don't think it's a stretch to say at all that the skill of communication is extremely important. After all, I am broadcasting to you guys right now via YouTube. Now, there's a specific reason that I put this one here besides the fact that communications is important. And that is if you do these classes, you're likely going to have to prepare and present a bunch of different speeches. Now, public speaking in general is going to be one of the most valuable skills that you can possibly learn. It really doesn't matter what career you go into. At some point, you're going to have to do some kind of presentation and present information to people. And you're going to have to do it in such a way where you persuade them and that it makes sense. Now, again, I think this is a skill that you can learn on your own. You don't necessarily have to go to college for this. There are organizations out there such as Toastmasters where you can go every single week and present a speech to people and they will critique you on, you know, maybe you're using your hands too much or maybe you're not making eye contact or, you know, something along those lines. However, choosing this one as a minor at the very least is going to give you some initial public speaking experience and that can be really good for you. Number four on the list is going to be math related degrees such as statistics or mathematics. Now, I've talked a lot before about math degrees. I think they're great. One of the problems with them is they can be a little bit too general, a little bit too abstract. This is why when you look at the pay for math careers, there's a huge difference between when you first start and when you're in the mid-career pay range. A lot of the time when you're looking at these degrees, you'll see that the difference is almost double. And the reason for that is because you are going to have a little bit of a tough time convincing hiring managers that your abstract general mathematics skills are going to help them make money. Show me the money! they've got to be able to justify your salary. Now, I know that a lot of people would probably rather watch paint dry than do mathematics professionally, but if you like doing math, you should definitely consider minoring in it. This is another one of those skills that is going to help you pretty much no matter what career you go into. The fact that so many people dislike math means there's a lot of opportunity there. So if you even like math a little bit, you should consider minoring in it. Number three on the list is going to be computer science. Now, I said it before, I'm not putting this one as number one anymore. It's pretty much a meme now, I'm not doing it anymore. This is still a very good one though. Everything that we're doing is heading towards knowing how to code, having technology skills. These are some of the most important skills that you can have. There's a lot of jobs out there that don't even exist yet that are going to require a foundational, just a bedrock of technology skills. And then the ones that do exist out there, there's tons of those as well. If you get technology skills, that's a great way of future-proofing yourself. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. There's some industries that might not even exist anymore. There's some companies that are going to get disrupted and they don't exist. Nobody really knows, but if you have these technology skills, you're going to be okay. There are massive disruptions happening across all kinds of different industries and technology and computer science skills are going to make a lot of different businesses. But anyways, even just knowing the basics of coding is going to help you out a lot. This is why I am currently teaching myself Python. Number two on the list is going to be business related degrees. Now I've talked about this a lot before. Business related skills are going to be useful no matter what job that you go into. Business related degrees were the most common degrees that create the most billionaires as well as millionaires. And there's a reason for that. Sure, some people who go into business are going to be business minded. And so therefore, they're more likely to become billionaires and millionaires. But at the same time, you have to ask yourself, was it the chicken first or was it the egg? Maybe going into a business related degree is going to lead you into being more entrepreneurial. At the very least, it will help you justify getting your first job, getting your foot in the door, and then later on moving into the higher paying managerial position. Positions. Now, on top of that, it's going to directly help you make money by getting a job, but it's also going to teach you some skills that will indirectly help you make money as well. I've talked to a lot of business majors before, and they almost all understand the fundamentals of economics, for instance. This gives them a better idea of how the world works in general. It'll also help them to spot opportunities if they stumble upon one. Business majors tend to have a better understanding at an earlier age of the fundamentals of personal finance, such as saving money, cash flow, investing, and all that sort 
sort of thing. Now, after entering into an industry, working your way up to a managerial position and becoming an expert on something, it's going to be very easy for you to spot opportunities where you could maybe start your own business. I know this is what happens to a lot of different people. This isn't for everyone. Not everyone is built to be an entrepreneur or not everyone even wants to be an entrepreneur, but this is the track that a lot of people take over their lifetime. Number one on the list, and this is going to be the most important by far. This is number one by a mile, and that is going to be minoring in something that you're passionate about. If you happen to be passionate about some of the other ones that I listed on this list, that's great. You should minor in them, okay? I think one of my subscribers put it best, and I told her I was going to steal that quote, and I'm doing it on this video when she said, my dad's motto is majoring in something you'll get a job in and minoring in something you love. LOL. Unfortunately, the way that degrees are these days, you have to think more practically when it comes to choosing your major. It used to be that you could just get any degree out there and you'd be good to go. You'd be set for life. It's not like that anymore. There are a lot of degrees out there that are absolute debt traps. However, when it comes to minors, you're going to have to take extra classes anyway. So you might as well just choose taking classes in something that you're really passionate about. If your passion happens to be film or history or economics like mine is, then absolutely minor in that. I think applying different things that you learn from liberal arts degrees, arts degrees, and social science degrees can enrich every other area of your life, not only in your professional life, but also in your personal life. I think there's a ton of value in all of these subjects, but unfortunately, with the way things are today, you simply should not major in them probably 99% of the time, but double majoring in them if you have another major that's a little more practical, minoring in them, or just taking extra classes or studying it on the side can bring a new perspective to the world, and I think it's it's very valuable. Now there's a few things that I think it's important to consider when it comes to choosing a minor that I didn't mention in the video. The first thing is just practically speaking, you want to make sure that you decide before the end of your sophomore year. So if you are going to do a minor, which you don't have to, but I think it's a good idea, you need to decide which minor you're going to do before the end of your sophomore year. A lot of people get into their last year and they think, oh man, um, I wonder if I can minor in something. And then it just happens to be that they simply don't have enough time and so they just end up not getting a minor at all. However, if you decide early on which one that you want to minor in and then you go down that track, you'll have more than enough time. The second thing that I want to mention is a minor really isn't all that important. It's honestly just extra. If your plate is full, you're already strapped for time, you don't have any extra time to give to anything, then in my opinion, what you should do is just ignore the minor, don't even worry about it. There are much more important things for you to focus on and it's gonna be different depending on which major you're going for, of course. In some majors, it's gonna be extremely important for you to focus on networking and others it's going to be more important for you to focus on doing projects or getting job or getting an internship but overall just generally speaking a minor is not going to be that important in the grand scheme of things number three thing that I want to mention is that the minor should really be complementary to your major so again this is something that you can kind of just put on your resume that's going to make you look a little bit more well-rounded if you're someone who's really heavily into stem for instance it would be really cool to see that you have a minor in like graduate graphic design. It shows that you have an artistic side and it shows that you're not just a robot like I mentioned before. Sorry, Mark. Now, number four on the list that I'm going to mention is if you do want to minor in something that's actually going to help you to achieve your goals, I really recommend that you have to do your research. Again, I mentioned this in a bunch of my different videos, but the best way for you to do research on how you're going to get to a certain career is to just simply contact people who are currently in that career. Ask them important questions like, for example, in this instance, are there any minors that would make my resume look better? They should be able to answer you on that question. Maybe they'll say it really doesn't matter. Maybe they'll say, you know what, this one kind of does matter. Or in my experience, it's kind of cool that the company wants people who are a little bit more well-rounded. And so therefore they have art minors, for instance, they'll probably tell you something along those lines. Nothing beats actually talking to people who are in the position that you want to get into. You can do this via Facebook groups, LinkedIn, your own personal network. You can try cold calling people in your area if you want to, or cold emailing them. Of of course, you want to be very respectful of their time. That goes without saying, if you're not going to be respectful of their time, then you know they're probably not going to want to answer your question. But for the most part, I have had people approach me on LinkedIn as well as in public asking me how they can uh, go about getting into my career. And I'm always more than happy to help them. And it's not just because I have a YouTube channel about degrees and careers. All right, make sure to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. And before you go, make sure to always check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.